Hey, Paula. I was just curious. Where are you right now? I'm in my bedroom, thank you very much. Why do you ask? Is there something you need from me? Well, I just wanted to let you know that I had finished making lunch. I tried calling upstairs towards your room, but there wasn't any answer, so I'm texting instead. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You really should try speaking up a bit more next time, dear. But thank you for the message. I'll head down to eat the food. So, why don't you go run along now? Sorry, run along where? I haven't eaten yet either. Well, that's what I mean. Why don't you take your lunch and go eat it in your room? And don't even think about coming out until you've heard me go back upstairs. Ugh, I don't even want to have to think about seeing your face while I'm eating. Do you understand me? Paula, how long are we going to do this for? Just how long are you going to ask me to go eat in a separate room from you? How long? Uh, well, forever, of course. What kind of silly question is that? You know that seeing your face just instantly kills my appetite. I'll never be able to eat in the same room as you. Do I really have such a strong effect on you? Maybe if I had a better, cuter daughter-in-law to enjoy these meals with, then things would be different. But if I have to sit at the table with someone as ugly as you... Well, I'm very, very sorry that I was the woman that your son ended up marrying. Well, at least you apologize for it. <sighs> it really is a shame, though. Not only are you already ugly to start with, but you also have those horrible burns on your face, too. Ugh. You really are just painful to look at through and through. I see, and that's how you really feel about me? But I suppose if you didn't have that horrible scarring, then my son probably would never have married you in the first place. Oh, he really is such a kind and caring boy. You really ought to consider yourself lucky, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, but what is that supposed to mean? I mean just what I said, Tabitha. I mean, you got those scars in a car accident while my son was driving, remember? You do remember how you got all those horrible scars on your face, don't you? It wasn't Logan's fault, though. There was so much snow that day that we could both barely see the road ahead of us. I never once blamed Logan for what happened to me. It was just an unfortunate event, nothing else. Mm, an unfortunate event, huh? Well, Logan only married you because he felt guilt about what happened. You do realize that, don't you? I also don't think that's what's going on either. We were already engaged to be married. That just proves his feelings for me didn't change after the accident. But you do know that he feels guilt about what happened, don't you? You know what a responsible boy he is. How could he not feel guilt about what happened? Do you really think that he still would have married you if you didn't end up as hurt as you did after the accident? I think I trust my husband and he trusts me and we both know that we love each other. So please don't talk as if there's anything else besides that as to what kept us together. I just can't help but feel bad for my little boy is all. If he had left you, he might have found an even better girl to marry by now. But now he has no choice but to keep the pain inside and pretend like he's happy with the way things are. But I know that it must really hurt him deep down to have to stare at your horrific visage every day. Look, I'm going to leave your lunch on the dining room table, and then I'm going to go out shopping. I hope you enjoy the meal and the space. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for doing as I say. <laughs> At least you know well enough to do that. Although, if I were you, I would put a mask on before you leave the house. What would the neighbors think if they knew we had a monster like you living with us? Tabitha! What the heck is the matter with you? How dare you show your face while I have guests over? Just what in the world are you thinking? I'm terribly sorry, Tabitha. I just thought that I would give everyone some tea and cookies. You think anyone here wants to see your disgusting mug? You totally embarrassed me. I thought I told you to stay in your room when I have guests over. Either that or leave the house. All right, then. I'll be sure to do that next time. 
Well, I hope you know just how much of a shock you gave my poor, frightened guests. You totally ruined the mood. All of this is your fault. Well, then next time I'll be sure to exercise more caution. You better do just that. This weekend, I have a very important client coming over to talk with me, and I do not want him seeing your face. Got it? Just stay in your room and don't make a peep. I don't want you causing any trouble while she's here. Do you understand me? Is this client really such a big deal that I have to do all of that? Of course she is. The woman who's coming over is an important representative for a very important potential client. I see, but that's a bit weird for your husband to be inviting his work associates over to the house, isn't it? Well, this time is a special exception. The person coming is interested in my husband's antiques. This is just a way for him to take a look at some of the items that he's interested in. Not to mention, it's a good way to start this business relationship with a friendly home visit. So that's why everything during this visit has to go just perfectly? That's right. My husband's business has seen much better days. But if he can just seal this deal, then I think all his problems will be solved. So then you're really hoping that this client coming tomorrow is going to be your saving grace for whatever business troubles there are? Now you're getting it. And that's why this thing has to go perfectly. If we don't make this work, then it could be the end of my husband's business. Well, in that case, I really will do my best to be careful when he comes. That's right. You shouldn't do anything but sit perfectly still in your room. Because if this business goes down, then our lives are over. We'll become poor and maybe even homeless. And I'd lose all of the status of being married to a CEO that I gained when I got married. You know, Logan told me that you were really, really beautiful when you were younger. He told me that his dad fell in love with you the moment he saw you. And just what is that supposed to mean? Are you saying that I'm not beautiful now? No, of course not. That's not what I'm saying at all, Paula. I'm well aware of the fact that I've put on a few pounds since I was in my 20s. But all that means is that I'm taking care of my health and eating right. Of course, I've always thought that you were a very pretty woman. And your skin always looks amazing. You're just trying to say that I don't have anything going for me except my skin. Is that it? You think I'm just some old grandma, Pastor Prime? I'm really not trying to say anything of the sort. I really do think that you're pretty. I may be a bit fatter and have more wrinkles than I was when I was younger, but at least I'm not some kind of circus sideshow attraction. I don't know how I could live with myself if I have the face you do. And you don't even have the excuse of being old like me to explain these things. You really do have quite strong feelings about the way I look, don't you? That reminds me, actually. I've heard that this person coming over tomorrow is quite the looker as well. It sounds like they have a lot going for them. Good looking and representing such important people for a living. That's right. They're very high up in this company. And I hear that they're even related to the CEO. Some people even say that they're next in line to take over the company. Although other people are saying that that would be just nepotism. Either way, this is someone that we want to be on good terms with. Well, then maybe it would be best to prepare some kind of meal for them when they come over. I can go to the store and get any ingredients that we would need for that. I was already thinking of picking up something from a fancy restaurant in town. I wouldn't want him to think that we're cheap by serving him handmade food. But why don't you go to that bakery across from the grocery store and get something fancy for dessert? And stop by a tea shop to pick up something nice from there, too. Got it. I'll be sure to do all of that. Do you know what kind of person this representative is? Like, what they might like or not like? Well, according to my husband, the woman that's coming is about 40 years old. She prefers sweet things to tart things, and likes something with a good depth of flavor. So get the most expensive thing you can find that matches that. And I'll make sure to get some kind of fancy tea to go along with the sweets as well. That's very good. And lastly, make sure she doesn't see your face even for a moment tomorrow. Just find an excuse to be out of the house when she comes over tomorrow. Got it? 
I got it. You don't have to worry. You have got some serious nerve, do you know that? Just why aren't you home right now? Are you trying to get out of having to do your chores? Get back home and get to cooking this instant. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I thought that you wanted me out of the house today. Should I come back? I'm, I'm not sure what you'd like me to do. You mean that you're still out doing the shopping? Oh, you're probably scaring half the town with that horrible face. But I thought that you wanted me out of the house. Just do as I say and get back here this instant. I'm sorry, did something happen with that important client of yours? I feel like this is much earlier than I was thinking of coming home. Why don't you just mind your own business and do as I say? What makes you say that it's none of my business? Because none of this concerns you at all. And don't go thinking that you're entitled to know anything just because you're family. I don't think of you as family at all. I'm afraid that this really is the last straw. I've had it with you and there will be no deal with my husband. Excuse me? And who is this? All I'm saying is that you are the one who forced me out of your house and ruined the deal. You got upset and threw hot tea all over my dress, and now you're trying to take out your frustrations on your daughter-in-law? It's just horrible. How did you know about the tea? I thought that you were out of the house. Have you still not figured it out yet? It's me, Linda. I was just over at your house. Anyways, as I said above, there is not going to be any deal with my husband. Wait, Linda? B b this doesn't make any sense. Why are you texting me from Tabitha's number? Well, as I was driving home, I happened to get a flat tire, you see. I was worried about what to do when Tabitha was walking up the road. She stopped along the way and helped me change my tire, and then we started to talk and found out that we were from the same town. Is this really Linda? I... I don't believe it! You can choose to believe me or not, it really doesn't matter either way. I've already told you what I wanted to. There will be no deal. Wait, no, please. You can't be serious about that deal, right? I'm afraid that I'm very, very serious. And I will be telling my husband about this. After all, this is going to be the company I'm taking over. No, no, please, you can't. Can't we just start over and pretend like nothing happened? You can't actually be that upset over a little tea, can you? It wasn't just the fact that you dumped a cup of tea on me. It was also that this was one of my favorite dresses. But even that's not the reason the deal is off. The real thing is that after all that, you are going to try and pin the blame for everything on your poor daughter-in-law. Don't you already treat her poorly enough? Why can't you just accept responsibility for what you've done? But... You saw her face, right? You know what she looks like. With all that scarring, oh, she's horrible. She looks like a monster. I don't think she looks like any of those things. But her skin, just looking at it makes me so queasy. You really don't think that at all? I think that it's obviously a bit different from other people's, yes, but I don't think that means it's horrific. It has its own sheen and beauty to it. Besides, just why are you, as Tabitha's mother-in-law, always trying to put her down? You should be supporting her as part of your family. But what's the point of pretending that she's beautiful? I mean, you're beautiful. Surely you must see the difference between you and her. I think that Tabitha's scars do make her beautiful and mark her as a survivor of someone no one would ever want to put themselves through. Where you see ugliness, I see strength. Not just physically, but mentally as well. You're really trying to find ways to defend how horrible she looks? Paula, do you mind if I ask just how old you are? I'm 59 years old. Why do you ask? I see. Well, did you know that I'm 56 years old? Wait, you are? I thought you had to be somewhere in your 40s. Well, I work very, very hard to take care of myself. I heard that you used to be beautiful once, too. Tabitha told me all about how much value you put into your looks and how stunning you used to make yourself. 
I remember that when I walked down the streets, I would turn so many heads. <laughs> Everyone wanted a date with me. But I suppose no one has been turning their head to look at you lately, yes? After all, you're much... more to look at since you put on so much weight. To be honest, you look like a snowman come to life. But even then, I don't think that's what makes you ugly. You... you really think that's how I look? It isn't my fault. These things just happen when you get older. I can't help it. Oh, really? Because we're only three years apart, but you aren't really going to pretend that we look the same, are you? I keep my figure by always tracking what I eat and exercising regularly. Even Tabitha tells me she applies all kinds of creams and ointments to treat her skin. So just what kind of effort are you putting in to take care of your body, huh? And just what gives you the right to call your daughter-in-law ugly? Now, I know I've put on some weight since I was younger, but you can't honestly be saying that I'm uglier than Tabitha, right? I do think that you're ugly. I think that who you are on the inside shows through on the outside, and I think that you're just a very ugly person. Anyways, I may rethink my position on our business deal if you rethink how you treat people. You useless cow! This is all your fault. My life is coming apart, and it's all your fault! We've tried going back to Linda and apologizing over and over, and she won't listen. And just what does any of this have to do with me, Linda? It all has to do with you. It's your fault that my husband's business is done for. You'll pay for this. I'm sorry, but from what Linda says, it's your fault that the deal wasn't going to go through. You threw her tea on her and then tried to take out your frustration on me, and that's why the deal didn't happen. Oh, just shut up. What do you know? Don't try and spin this against me. I know that it's only a matter of time until my Logan stops loving you. How could anyone love such an ugly girl? I want you to move out of this house right this instant! You know, Logan and I have already talked about my face. We had a long talk about it when we first got married. What are you going on about with this nonsense? Don't you think that I was already worried about what these scars might mean for me? I was really worried that Logan wasn't going to want to marry me once I had them. And he shouldn't have. I told you that no one would want to marry a girl that looked like you. I even brought this up again with him yesterday. I asked him if he ever thought about leaving me because of the way I looked. So then the two of you are finally going to get divorced? Huh, I was wondering when this day would come. If that's the case, then I want you out of the house by the end of the day. Sorry, I wasn't quite finished. We talked, and Logan said that he would never want to leave me. Are you kidding me? He told me that he wanted to marry me before the accident, and that his feelings for me never once changed since the accident. But he also understands that I'm not happy sharing the house with you, and so he agreed to move out with me. So then, the both of you are going to move? You know, I never once told Logan about all the horrible things that you were always saying to me. I didn't want him to beat himself up anymore for the accident. But I couldn't hold back any longer and finally came out to tell him the truth, and he agreed that it wasn't good to stay with you in this house any longer. No, no, you can't do this. You can't steal my son away from me. Who is going to take over the family business if you do that? That's going to be a matter for your husband to figure out. We've already talked about this with him, however. But you've already ruined the family business, and now you're going to take my son? You're horrible. I think the only horrible one here is you. Do you still not get why I decided to cancel the contract with you? Wait. Is this Linda again? Huh, what is going on here? I realized that I might have been presumptuous, but I came over to recommend a fantastic plastic surgeon I know to Tabitha. A plastic surgeon? You mean one that would deal with all her scarring? That's right, this doctor is an old friend of mine from college. I understand that your son doesn't mind it one bit, but still, I think it's only fair that Tabitha knows that she has other options. But, 
I still don't get why you don't want to do business with us. My husband and I already apologized to you so many times. You apologized and then continued on with the same behavior that drove me away from doing business with you in the first place. I told my husband that our business needed to have higher standards for who it dealt with, and that means avoiding deals with you. Please, our business is going to fall apart without your support. This isn't fair. You're mixing business with our personal lives. How can you just leave our business to crumble like this? Business or personal, it isn't my job to take care of your company. Now goodbye, Paula. After that, Paula and her husband's business was only able to keep itself open for a couple more months without Linda's contract. The business was doing poorly, which in turn affected Paula's marriage. It was a vicious cycle that turned Paula and her husband against each other until neither of them could stand each other and they got divorced. In the midst of the divorce, Linda decided to buy Paula's bankrupt business and even hired on Paula's husband after the divorce was completed. Since Linda was Paula's biggest reason why doing business would be impossible, once she was out of the picture, things were able to continue business as usual. No longer tied to her husband's business anymore, Paula was forced to go out and find work as well as a new place to live. The last I heard, she moved into a tiny, cheap studio apartment that she pays for with the multiple part-time jobs she had to go out and find. One of them, apparently, is at a fast food restaurant working the grill. I can only imagine what being around that much grease is doing to Paula's skin now. As for Logan and I, we went back and forth about whether or not to get plastic surgery. Part of me really had come to think of my scars as proof that I survived something traumatic. And Logan reassured me that he still found me as beautiful as the day we met. One of the largest factors holding us back from making the decision was the cost of it all. I mentioned this to Linda in passing, as we'd started to spend more time together since I helped her change her tire on that fateful day. It actually turned out that we had some friends in common, and she became someone I could go to when I wanted to get something off my chest. Anyways, I mentioned about how one of the reasons it was so hard to make a decision about the surgery was because of the price. That was when Linda offered to help us finance the surgery. While I still haven't made up my mind, I can't help but feel so lucky that I have so many people in my life willing to support me, whatever choice I make. And I know that no matter what I do end up choosing to do, I already know that it'll be beautiful either way. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.